This is just an example of an avalanche dog certification test. Here Magic is working a mock drill. A large area is disturbed to simulate as much as possible a real avalanche. In this case it's approximately 70 meters by 70 meters with two complete burials. The dog has 30 minutes to daylight both subjects. Blocks are placed across the entrance of the snow caves and then the original holes are filled in so that there's no visible sign of the cave's location. This is more for the benefit of the handler than the dog, since dogs prefer to use their noses rather than their eyes. Since it's impossible to remove the shoveler's scent from the cave, we have them walk and sometimes even roll around on as much of the deposition as possible, so that the dog learns to distinguish between the scent of the subject that is percolating up from underneath the snow and that of those who have walked on the surface of the snow. This is closer to what they'll experience in real avalanches. I typically allow my dogs to do a hasty search before I employ any strategy. It's not unusual for the dog to pick up the victim's scent within seconds, even on a real mission. Avalanche dogs must want to work independently of their handlers, especially during the hasty search. Once he's located his first subject and has made physical contact, I give him a verbal reward. I find that if he's given a tug reward at that time, it's more difficult to redirect his attention to the next subject. In a real avalanche, precious moments can't be spared, leaving the dog at his first subject, while other rescuers are obtaining a probe strike and then digging him out. Good strategy is to get our dog's noses to those places where they can most effectively pick up scent cones coming from the buried people. It may be necessary to do a Z pattern of the entire deposition. This is something that the seasoned dog learns to do automatically. Once he's pinpointed his subjects, I will then help by shoveling, but only enough to encourage him. It takes experience to be able to read your dog's body language and know when he has definitely hit on his subject, especially on a real mission with a deceased victim whose scent is less significant and definitely less tantalizing to the dog. Digging is a large part of an avalanche dog's reward, so he must dig independently and enthusiastically. It's a good idea to allow the dog to re-enter the cave more than once to extend the play and the reward game. This really is the reason that they work. The dog should have no fear of entering the cave and getting up close and personal. The subject can push himself out just enough to give the dog the sensation that he's pulling his subject out of the snow. Obviously, you should never attempt to bury a person under the snow without the supervision of an experienced dog handler. Avalanche dog work is just a small part of a much larger operation. We encourage you to become a member of either a ski patrol or a search and rescue dog team so that you're well trained and skilled in all aspects of avalanche rescue. You must have all the required equipment as well as the ability to use it efficiently and effectively. You must be able to travel safely and capably in the backcountry. The avalanche dog is just one essential element of a finely tuned mutual team effort. If you'd like more information about avalanche dogs, I encourage you to get a copy of my book, Avalanche Hasty Search, either from Amazon.com or you're welcome to call me at 970-389-1515 or email me at ptb at Thank you very much.